Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about cortical and subcortical dementias. We're going to talk about how those relate to the signs and symptoms and the type of dementias that you're likely to see in the patients. And knowing these are really important because you can start to distinguish what type of dementia the patient might have. This is obviously an MRI of a patient's brain and this is to demonstrate the difference between the cortical, the grey matter in the brain, and the subcortex, the white matter. So if we take a look here, you can see that all of the grey matter here, as it's called, is called the cortical. And this is generally on the outside, the cortex of the brain. If you're talking about the subcortex, that's the white matter here that you can see and all of the areas around here. What you'll find is that patients who have either problems with their cortical matter or their subcortex will have different symptoms. Generally, what you will find with the grey matter is that your patients will experience some um, problems with their memory and problems with their language comprehension and also problems with sensory perceptions as well so things like hearing emotion speech decision making and self-control and we'll go into a little bit how that presents within dementia patients later and it'll make sense when we're talking about the white matter those areas here those are really the inner tissues of the brain and those are more responsible for motor functions and that will become apparent when we look at some of the different types of dementia going on. On this table here you can see what we've done is we've divided it up on the left um, to cortical or grey matter onto the right is subcortical, the white matter. Remember the cortical grey matter is more associated with things like memory and perception of reality. The white matter is normally associated with things like motor functions. So a typical example that we give of a cortical dementia is Alzheimer's disease, which is really, really prevalent. And you've probably seen a lot of those patients. How that relates to is you typically see Alzheimer's disease presenting initially with a reduction in memory in that people can't remember things that happened recently, their short-term memory goes. You start to then see that they have difficult perceiving the area around them. So they might have difficulty um, with language perception, not understanding what's told to them. They might have emotional difficulty with things like hallucinations or psychosis, but their emotions might change and the person that they are might change. This reflects the gray matter as well in that you often get personality disturbances in that the person often does not end up quite the same as the person that was known before to the relatives. And that's quite usually quite distressing. They become quite um, aggressive and sometimes they don't start to recognize their own family members. If we flip over to the right side to the subcortical, typically this is Parkinson's presentation where normally those Parkinson's patients that you see, they start off with that motor disturbance because it's the white matter. So normally they get some speech problems, but they also might get some um, problems with motor as well. And typically that starts with a tremor and then they start to progress as their disease goes on. They start to get problems with their mobility and walking and they get that kind of shuffling gait that you tend to see with Parkinson's. This is true with frontotemporal and Korsakoff's dementia as well. Um, frontotemporal, if we just go back, happens at the frontal part of the brain and within the white matter here and there, you typically see that they normally have motor symptoms as well. And Korsakoff's dementia, normally caused by alcohol abuse, you start to get those motor problems as well and tremor becomes really apparent in those. The tricky one to distinguish is vascular and loo body. Vascular dementia obviously caused by micro damage to the vascular, either by atherosis, or it can be due to high blood pressure which damages the blood vessels as well. That's really tricky because obviously that can happen within the cortical matter, the grey matter, but within the white matter as well. And sometimes you start to get a mixed picture where you might have memory problems, but also motor problems as well. And unfortunately, a lot of patients who have Parkinson's go on to develop vascular dementia. And that's why you see early on in Parkinson's presentation, patients are typically able to comprehend what you're talking about. They're able to follow you. They're not confused. Um, but as the disease progresses within sort of 10 years of first diagnosis of Parkinson's, usually a lot of them have got advanced dementia and normally it's vascular. Low body dementia is slightly different and that's a buildup of proteins within the brain. And that can either affect the subcortical, the white matter responsible for motor, but also the cortical, the gray matter as well, responsible for memory and comprehension, emotions and feelings as well. And as you can see, just as we've talked about as we go down within the cortical 
Memory symptoms very common, but motor symptoms less common. And language is normally dysphasic or dysarthria. Dysphasia talks about the comprehension of language, where dysarthria talks about problem speaking. So you sometimes find that motor symptom in there. Generally with cortical, um, their calculation is impaired. And that means that in some of the tests that we do as you watch the next video, you'll find that we really try and test patients' calculation to discover if they've got dementia. And we usually ask them to do basic arithmetic sums. We ask them to calculate the months of the year to who's on the throne and questions like that that involve calculation. And then we can see if that's impaired or not. And that gives us a really good indication if they've got a gray matter uh, cortical dementia. Generally in terms of their posture, because they haven't got those motor symptoms, they're generally upright as well. If we just go over to the subcortical, to the white matter, you'll see that the memory symptoms initially are less marked. But motor symptoms, because the subcortex, the white matter, is responsible for motor systems, you'll find that the symptoms of tremor, of, of Parkinsonian gait, or problems with gait and falls, are quite common. And language is normally dysarthric as well. So what you'll find is that they, although they know what they want to say, they won't physically be able to get the words out because their motor symptom is impaired. So that their things like their larynx, their tongue, their mouth doesn't respond as well. So typically their speech is impaired. Calculation though, interestingly, is less impaired. And what you'll find a lot of people with Parkinson's, although they may struggle to communicate, they will actually understand what you're talking about and will normally have their cognition intact in the early stages. Their posture is normally bowed and extended and normally they lean to the front in order to correct their center of balance to compensate for those motor problems. So the prevalence of dementia in the UK, by far what you're going to see is Alzheimer's is the highest and that accounts for between 60 and 80%. Remember these are the patients with a cortical dementia, grey matter is affected, so calculation, memory, and emotions and perceptions are going to be altered. After that, you find that about 10% of them are vascular dementia. And remember, that can have a mixed picture. It can be both motor and it can be memory and feelings as well, because it, it can affect the cortical or the subcortical areas of the brain. Lou body and Korsakoff syndrome account for 7 and 4%. And remember, those are the ones that typically affect the subcortex of the brain responsible for motor movement. And finally, Parkinson's disease, which then goes on to cause dementia. And around 50 to 80% will develop a form of dementia. This could either be vascular or Lou body. It depends entirely on which area of the brain are affected. So they're quite sometimes quite difficult to pick up.